Lauren, I took a log extrapolation of deaths today in America, and we are in the vicinity of 500,000 deaths in early May of this year, of this year, like an X number of weeks when the baseball season starting and the Baltimore Orioles are in first place. Lauren Sauer, can the vaccinations take us off that logarithmic trend? I think they can. And, I mean, I think the rollout, there's, there's been some challenges with the rollout, but I do think that we're going to see, you know, a nonlinear scale up of vaccinations across the country. The Trump administration just pushed forward uh, a new plan to vaccinate anyone over 65 um, across the country. So that will change the distribution plans for a lot of states. Um, we'll see increased access to vaccine as well as, as states start to build things like um, mass vaccination uh tents and things like that, similar to what we did with testing. So I think we will see um, uh, pull away from uh, that potential death rate. I mean, but still, 4,400 people um, yesterday died of coronavirus. And so we can't walk away from the physical distancing that we've been doing. We can't walk away from the masking. We still have to have a better understanding of what transmission looks like um, once you've been vaccinated. So, so really important to keep those basic measures in place. Lauren, how is this different in terms of vaccine distribution compared to what we do every year for the flu? I think one of the biggest challenges is the cold chain storage for the for particularly for Pfizer, but for both of them that we have now. So we're we're needing to use new vaccination strategies and the the rollout is to be as efficient as possible. So when we release the flu vaccine, we give people a good amount of time at many different places across the country to be able to get their flu vaccine. They have a large window when it's available, um, that sort of sl slow or um, tempered rollout allows us to not require massive amounts of storage for frozen vaccine, things like that. Um, so it is a little different. I think that's where we will end up ultimately uh, if we need to do routine coronavirus vaccination. But for now, it's really to get people in as quickly as possible. The other challenge is that we need to monitor people when they first receive the vaccine. So um, making sure that they don't have any adverse reactions in that uh, 15 to 30 minute window after they've been vaccinated. And and that's not something that pharmacies um, are really set up to do right now. Lauren, have the, have the number of people that want to get vaccinated increased or decreased? I think the number of people that want to get vaccinated is probably hovering around the same. Um, I think probably it's increasing some as people who were on the fence about wanting vaccination are seeing people you know, across the country and across the globe get safely vaccinated. Um, that being said, I think access is going to be critical as we roll it out to beyond that phase one group. So the beyond the group of healthcare workers um, and the elderly population, making sure that we have the messaging in place, built, that we're building that trust with the communities um, and that we're still focusing on those healthcare workers and elderly populations that, that didn't actually get vaccinated in phase one for a variety of reasons, whether it was access um, or fear or mistrust or any of the other reasons that they chose not to get vaccinated. Well, Lauren, how important is it that you track people coming from abroad? So the fact that international travelers now need to show a negative test result before entering, d d is that a game changer or does it just help at the margins? I mean, testing doesn't really eliminate you know, all of the risk of, of people mo moving the virus globally in international travel. Um, but it, it does reduce risk, um, in particular for the passengers that interact with each other in those more confined spaces. So on the airplane, in the airports, in um, local public transportation, all of those things are um, that that negative test before they get on the plane, risk to those individuals will be reduced. In a country like the United States, where there's significant national spread and ongoing community transmission in almost every state, um, it it's more important to really focus on having people not move around as much, having people um, not travel if they absolutely don't have to, and not bringing people into the country. Because if you're coming from a country, if you have a negative test and you're coming from a country where there's not a ton of, of community spread, you're actually at higher risk by coming here.